What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, October 23rd, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the new face of video games, Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Greg, uh, two things. One, did you like the KFGD intro you just heard? I do. I'm very happy that they made it for me, the King of Halloween. As well, actually, I was, Spirit Halloween. I was actually the one that, that commissioned it, and so you're welcome. Uh, I understand everybody. that that's the narrative you and Imran started spinning. All right. I also know the real origins of that intro, and I know you had nothing to do with it. Hmm, interesting. I, I don't know what you're talking about. But no, number two thing I wanted to shout out, uh, I wanted to shout out your your Halloween jacket. It's the same Thank jacket you. you wore earlier in the week on PS Love You XOXO, but I it love is. that you keep wearing it and spreading the Halloween love. <laughs> yeah, well, I love that you're still wearing yours. It's the newer version. That's cool that they sent it to you before they declared you weren't the spirit Halloween uh, king, but I'm the king of Halloween. Uh, you know, it's 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 always sad to see a charlatan like yourself ruin this holiday, but that's what you're set out to do for some reason. And we have one more week to live through of this living nightmare. Is that a PS5? That is a PlayStation 5. We're going to talk about the fact that we have a PlayStation 5. We're going to talk about the fact that Xbox might be giving you a streaming stick. And we're going to talk about so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. We'll answer those questions live here. Of course, on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can also get the show ad-free. And you can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. If that wasn't enough, you could be a Patreon producer like our friends James Davis, Blackjack, and Tom Bach. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and roosterteeth.com and and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday housekeeping for you over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games there's a brand new first impressions up blessing what's it all about uh, me and barrett we played through some genshin impact yesterday of course oh. if you're familiar or if you're unfamiliar with genshin impact open world action rpg very breath of the wild like it's been it's been the new hotness everybody's been talking about it we played about 30 something minutes i want to say uh, and had a really good time everybody should go check out that first impressions available on video and audio have you, how much money have you sunk into it none no i i mean i'm not i've not played that much of it at this point i'm probably five six hours in uh okay. and from what i understand from people you it it has gotcha mechanics like that's why it's a free-to-play game like a free-to-play open world rpg um but those gotcha mechanics don't necessarily define the experience like loot boxes are are a part of are part of it but you don't need to spend money to have fun with it and i can confirm like from the from the limited amount of time that i put into it i've never I, i've i've had a blast with it so far and i've not really felt compelled to spend any money okay Fair enough. Get the full first impressions. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. And also, more importantly, something we need to stress to you, uh, the first impressions podcast uh, feed. That's right. Kind of funny. First impressions is available on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, whatever they call it. Now, all the different podcast services, probably a Zoom out there. Uh, if you could go like subscribe and share that, that'd be great. But most importantly, just go subscribe to it. Uh, help get those numbers going, of course, because first impressions was something before that. And then we weren't doing them regularly. And then we said blessing. If you don't save first impressions, you're fired. And so he's been working really hard to make sure that, that happens and he's doing a yeah. great job please really and, and let it. me tell you i mean if like the fact there's a playstation 5 behind me doesn't give it away you'd want to be subscribed to that first impressions feed oh yeah. it's going to be a gnarly gnarly november as we said we laid out everything that's happening in november and december and it's like whoosh good lord there's a lot happening yeah. so get on time. That. Uh, today we're brought to you by old spice but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. There are six items on the Roper Report. Baker's Dozen. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, it has happened. We have the PlayStation 5. Now, hold on. I Even though I'm the king of Halloween, I'm taking off my Halloween Whoa. jacket just to show the PS I Love You sweatshirt. Remember, there's a new PS I Love You bomber jacket happening soon, too. Uh, the PlayStation 5 is here. We have it. A whole bunch of other journalists in the world have it and people. All we can do right now is show you the box of it. Show it it's in there. I can tell you it's heavy. I can spin it around. Blessing, hold up yours. We got ours right here. Blessing has uh, his. Blessing, he asked you to hold Blessing, yours Blessing, hold up yours. Where's blessing. yours, Blessing? Blessing, I, They sent it to your... both of us. 
Bus and where's yours? Dedicated. I, I don't know if you noticed this. I'm very sad this morning because uh, last night I got tracking info for one sure. for, for a, a potential PlayStation 5 that would be in my possession today. The tracking info said estimated time, 8 a.m. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to set my alarm, 7.30 a.m., pick up that thing. It's going to be great. Woke up at 7.30, looked at, my tr- looked at my phone, looked at my tracking info. Apparently, they tried to deliver it at 7 a.m., and I just did not hear it because I was dead asleep. And so I got no PS5 right now. I'm very sad about it, Greg. Very sad. Extremely sad. Not happy. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'll ask you this. Is this truly the man you want reigning over Halloween? This guy can't even get out of bed to get a PlayStation 5, and you think he's good enough to represent the best holiday in the calendar year? He sucks! Take off the jacket! Who who delivers things at 7 a.m.? I'm a small town PlayStation podcaster, but I'll tell you, this man ate fit. To lead Take me to Target, jacket. let alone Why's lead food? me to Halloween. Take Why 7 a.m.? The jacket. There's no excuse. Why? This is, yeah, take off the jacket. You're the take throne, dude. There was never, you were never on the throne, but you're an embarrassment. First of all, PlayStation 5 has nothing to do with Halloween. My love for Halloween is eternal, and I will How keep it you until my dying breath. How can you say that? What does the PlayStation 5 have to do with Halloween? What doesn't it have to do with Halloween? How are you going to see point. the Dreams Halloween event in true 8K? That's the real question. Fair point. Fair point. Uh, I have turned on every notification I have possible now because they're gonna they're attempting to deliver it again at some point today. Would have been a good move yesterday, you know. See, this is would have been a good move yesterday. Maybe I wasn't thinking about that. (laughs) (laughs) No, this is I think you know when you want to talk about like just the actually there's a question here, and we're going to do this. Of course, you all wrote in right now with questions and comments about the PlayStation 5s coming out. Like I said, they're all over the place. Chat, feel free to throw out some questions if you want to know about the box. I know one of the things that was pointed out that I thought was interesting, and we should just do a tour of the box, I guess. Obviously, we've seen the cover here before. Disc version, PlayStation 5 over there, DualSense on it. Got the 8K. This made Jeff Grubb real mad. I don't know if Jeffy Grubb Grubb's in the chat, but he was real mad on Twitter about it. Do you Uh, not believe in 8K? Yeah, I don't know. He he kept linking to a bunch of articles about how 8K isn't even really a thing yet. And, and I was like, Jeffy, nobody cares. Just ex- accept that 8K is the future and we like things to be crystal clear, right? That's You know, me and Tim are always talking because we're big big uh, 4K and 8K fans about like, mm-hmm. man, this OLED TV that Tim had me bought, model X100 PCH2, like that's the one that it's really makes the visuals. It's a C9. You know I'm that. sorry. It's a, it's a C9. No, I don't actually. I can show you my text message. It's, it's a friend yesterday. It's 120 hertz. Like, you, you're all set, dude. God, good for you. God bless you. I'm pretty stoked about it. And like that's what I was saying. Me and Sam are ready for 8K. Um, spin around here. Contents, PlayStation 5 TV. console, Definitely wireless controller, capable. base, HDMI cable, AC power cord, USB cable, printed materials, Astro's Playroom, pre-installed Whoa. game. USB cable. That's awesome. I know, right? Well, see now. Yeah. Remember, it's USB-C, right? Over here, play like never before. This is the back of it if you're an audio listener. Sorry. It just shows the PlayStation 5 horizontal with the DualSense next to it. Lightning speed. Harness the power of a custom CPU and SSD with integrated I slash O that rewrite the rules of what a PlayStation console can do. Uh, breathtaking immersion. Discover a deeper gaming experience with support of haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, and 3D audio technology. And then stunning games. Marvel at the at incredible graphics and experience new PlayStation five features uh play back a back catalog of supported ps4 games with a system update and then another one that would have been making the rounds underneath it here on the very very bottom right where you have all your information here i'm not even uh, a lot of people in the chat are asking for you to lick the box just something that uh it's going mm. it's going on in the i'll consider it uh, right. on the bottom here for playstation 4 console users you can transfer your data to the playstation 5 in a number of ways connect your playstation 4 console and your playstation 5 console to the same network Connect your, connect your extended storage drive from your PlayStation 4 console to your PlayStation 5. Sign into your PlayStation 5 console with the account you created on a PlayStation 4. You can transfer data uh, such as gaming history and trophies, as well as profile and friend information. So again, no, no brand new information there. Nothing, nothing that's jumping off the box that we've never heard of before, um, but still good to know, good to have in our hands. Greg, these it. perverts are getting all worked up. Just a heads up. Yeah, you got to lick the box, Greg. Yeah, they're, they're demanding it. Yeah, they really want you to lick the box. See, I licked the box, and it's a whole thing. All right? Yeah, I licked the Vita a long good. time ago. Oh, I, don't I licked the, the Vita a long person. time ago. I was, actually, no. Chobot licked the PSP. That was a huge thing. That made, I put her on the map. You're right. I'm then sorry. Then me and Scott Lowe. Now, rem- 
a lot of kids out there right now, I understand you're about six years old. You're watching this show. I, I want to know how brave I, we used to be and before we even knew about coronavirus. At E3, a public trade show, when we first got our hands on the Vita, I licked it on IGN without cleaning it because we were in the middle of the demo. I want you to know that. That's mm. how serious I was about it. And now I lick the PlayStation 5 and everybody's like, ah, oh, Greg's a Sony pony. You know what I mean? I lose all these people who care and do all this different stuff. You know what I mean, Blessing? Wait, is that I what you're worried about? A- it's not. It's not coronavirus. Because I feel like that'd be my excuse. Dude, lick, I, how many times? Lick it, coronavirus. Lick it, oh, no. Bless, I need you to join. Lick it, lick it, lick it. Go to the kitchen. I know not you got tempo. wipes. Wipe that thing down with any, whatever kind of sanitation thing. Ah, you he's got. already wiped just, it down. He's a psychopath. He wiped down good and hard. You know what I mean? And then give it a give it a go, big old good old lick, <laughs> Greg. Sapphire Diamond Ruby writes in where I want to start the conversation today about the PlayStation 5 in the box here. And, set, and of course, wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can. It says, happy Friday. Uh, knowing you can't say much of anything, but for Greg, is today one of the best days of 2020? And was he like a kid on Christmas receiving that package today? Next gen hype. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, here's the thing about it. Of course, I've been in this game a long time. And there's, I understand it's hard, and especially as much as we play it up and get to, you know, talk about our passions and everything else. Sometimes it's hard, I think, to separate the excitement of obviously new consoles and where the 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 the, industry is going for the next seven years, but also then the anxiety of work. Last night, I thought was a great microcosm of that of me and Lucy James from Gamespot. We live together. If you didn't know, having this conversation that was Jen kept mocking us for of us both sitting there refreshing the FedEx page and being like, all right, cool. It says by 8 a.m. And I'm like, I've never had a package delivered by 8 a.m. in the in our house. And she's like, I know, but blah, blah, blah. And there's going to be a signature required and there's going to be this. And so then it was this thing of, all right, Jen, usually they ring your phone for the door. I need you to turn, have your ringer up all night long. I'll have my ringer up all night long. Throughout the night, I would wake wow, up. Smart. And- Thank you. Exactly right. It's almost like someone needed to plan for having the biggest thing. <laughs> Take that jacket they don't off. Ring you, us don't you, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Ring us. I just got a door that they knock on. I don't even have a doorbell. Well, then I mean, I definitely would have been up and like it was sleeping in front of the door at least. Anyways, yeah, sure, we went back sure. and forth about this, and we're point. refreshing the thing in the middle of the night. Portfolio would shift, and I would move them around, and then I would roll over and look at my phone to see what the update was because if it was going to be eight a.m., I need I wanted to know. <clears throat> and then today, about six a.m., Porty woke me up. Woke me up, and it was that thing of. Yeah, I'm just going to stay up because if this is going to pop off, I need to pop off. It's there. I think part of the it wasn't the excitement of like, you know, today I get to play the PlayStation 5. It was the excitement of or the anxiety, I guess, the dread of fucking this up. I didn't want to look like a fool without a PlayStation 5. You know what I mean? And like, how dare you? <laughs> for the record, I'm joking. That was a joke. Too. I didn't really get it. But. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it was the thing of I didn't want to I didn't want to let kind of funny down today I did I and I no, I'm not making fun of you bus I'm not making fun of you at all I swear like I if something was gonna I wanted to make sure we had it I wanted to make sure we had embargo I wanted to make sure we could have it on the show today like all these different things it's getting a little it. too yeah. real pull back it's getting a little too that, real. that was real that was all real so like I didn't have the excitement of man blah blah, blah. and then even today like it's now the Everest in front of us like. Even though there's so many embargoes in front of us, there's so much content me and Blessing are making today about this that it's that thing of like, all right, cool, like conserve your energy, be there and plan out what's going to happen. Last night I was moving around a whole bunch of stuff in here because of how I want to shoot and everything else that goes on. Now that leads into a question from Brandon H who wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can. It says, hey, Greg and Bless, what can you tell us about the PS5 embargo structure and what we can expect to hear when? Well, Brandon, as with most embargo structures, we can't tell you anything specific. Obviously, today, as you've seen, everybody's allowed to talk about and show the box and see that because it just arrived today. (laughs) That's the thing with them all rolling out. What I will say is the embargo for PlayStation 5 is tiered and they are covering just about, they are covering the broad strokes that you would want to know and the things you'd want to know in a timely fashion. So that's all I'm willing to say about what they're doing and how they're doing it. But there's a lot of PlayStation 5 coverage coming your way on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and obviously the plethora of podcast services. And I think, you know, Following us, there's going to be several big days where there's a lot, a of, lot of content out there. If Blessing can ever get his, exactly, yeah, I have you concur. refreshed lately. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, I, I just refreshed. <laughs> so what's the so like the deal is right now? It's going to come out for a second attempt today. Yes, I. It's been changing a lot, <laughs> even within like the last hour. I've seen sure. things like ping pong back and forth. 
Uh, but yeah, it went from being like, okay, no, come through at 5 p.m. to pick it up to now they're. It seems like they're going to try and attempt to deliver it again. That's okay. kind of where I, where I've left things. That's so, how it usually yeah. works at the office. Remember that if we usually what happens is we miss the first round of deliveries because no one's there, but then around 10, 30, 11 o'clock they'll come by with another one. Yeah, but yeah. like I feel like and, we broke them into doing that. Sure, you know? that's fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mad Chemist writes in to patreoncom slash games and says, "Good morning." After staring at Greg's tweet for the past thirty minutes, one question came to mind: Why doesn't the back of the box have art for upcoming games for us to look at? Blessing. You remember this? The old days, you get a PlayStation console, right? You, you turn it around, and guess what? A million different games back there. We've seen Xbox Series X's mm-hmm. box, right? On the back of that, you got Halo, or you got Master Chief looking off at the Halo going, man, these Halos, <laughs> oh, what are we going to do about them? Yeah, what? no, that's a that's a really good question. I have no idea, because I, I would have expected that, yeah, we would have gotten a box that has uh, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ratchet & Clank, even um, uh, the driving game. not Something All-Stars. <laughs> destruction the destruction, <laughs> destruction all-stars? yeah destruction, destruction all-stars. all-stars yeah like i would have expected that on there right like i i, I mean I, I think the box is fine how it is but i kind of have the same question of why not have that stuff on there yeah I, you know i joke around it's you know, pretty much every console before this or playstation console has had the stuff on there right i think it's a number of different reasons i don't know how much that matters anymore i've always i, I always thought it kind of weird like obviously i think i don't think i'm going out on a ledge here the PlayStation 2, the best box art, box of all time. Just that blue front just says PS2 on it. Remember how beautiful that was? But then you'd spin it around. I had a bunch of games on the back, and I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't no, Why? And I think, really? yeah. Did you, I mean, I, do, who, who needs that or wants that these days? Because you know what's going to be on the PlayStation 5. And let, let alone everything's behind glass. It's not like you're like, it's not like mom and dad are picking it up in the store and turning it around and be like, oh, I guess there's a bunch of games for this thing. Yeah, but I feel like I, I, maybe I'm just thinking from the perspective of me being a kid one day or back in the day and like <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Button <did> it. <laughs> uh, and like going to going to Best Buy or going to Walmart and, you know, seeing the box. Right. And turning around being like, oh, snap, like this is what I can look forward to. Right. I feel like there's excitement behind that. And maybe it's maybe it's a thing of they crunch the numbers and we're like, yeah, this doesn't really sell that many more PlayStation 5s as opposed to just having the box, right? Like, if people want to look at the games, they can just look at the at the, at the the CDs or look at the actual game boxes. Like, you don't need uh, all that stuff on there because at this point, like, the internet is available. Information is widely available. People yeah. know what they're getting on these boxes. Like, it's not like 2001 or 2000, right, where you're like, okay, cool. Like, you... Part of part of the experience of getting a PlayStation or arriving at the store is saying what awaits you, right? Like you you you, you didn't have that information just readily available at this at in the same way that it's readily readily available today. Yeah, you figure. I mean, what you even what you're pointing out, and granted, I know we're playing a little fast and loose with the timelines back then, but like for the PlayStation mm-hmm. Two launch in 2000, right? It was that idea of remember I was sitting there with my EGM reading that for nine hours, waiting to pick that up. Whereas now I'd be on my phone looking at, you know, IG and GameSpot, whatever, doing a million other things, I'm sure, too, Twitter, where, yeah, I think at the time it was a big deal to sit and hem and haw over the box. And on Christmas, right, when you get a new console as a child, I'm with you of, you know, turning it over and looking at all these different experiences you could have on it. But in a day now where everything's at your fingertips all the time, I, I just don't know if you need that. Again, there's another part of me, too, that might talk about that. Why is it like this? It might be something to do with how fucked up 2020's been. It might be the fact that, number one, they want to make sure they message it can be horizontal. Number mm. two, it might be that, do you put games on there with really vague windows, not knowing if they're going to be launch games, if they're going to be later games? Not granted, other systems have, of course, put those on there um, and not had a big deal about it, but maybe that's part of it they're not sure what's what and they don't want to put on their coming holiday coming sometime not put a date on it at all could be that but it's also too i think just like the way even the back of it's so simplistic and what they've gone with in terms of a clean almost apple like design and like uh, how they're selling things right and the same with the front the front of the box right like it's leaning into the sacred symbols obviously here being shattered on the white which if you now go i noticed playstation.com uh, a couple of weeks ago now when you go to the redeem page to redeem a code it has this kind of layout to it as well like they're going i think for a very clean futuristic design on it and so i think even the box they don't want cluttered with a whole bunch of stuff which are games which you assume people know about if they're this close to buying a playstation 5 yeah i think this also speaks to how they've been marketing the playstation 5 over the last year where it has felt like you're saying right like this futuristic box kind of kind of deal like i 
I, I feel like the Mark Cerny talk that we got back in spring is the is the biggest example of hey, PlayStation Five. Like our vision for this thing is to be like this piece of future technology, right? Like this is from three thousand eight, not two thousand late kind of thing. Eight. And yeah, having that sleek design on the box, having it be like this clean uh, white thing that's not being cluttered by uh, marketing images or by by games, having it just be this clean thing kind of speaks to that in a way that I think that they want. And so I think it makes sense from that angle. Uh, the nanobiologist writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can. and says, so Greg finally has completely entered the next generation after receiving the PlayStation five today. So my question is more vague because of embargoes as y'all get more and more consoles and shift focus to the new and shiny. How will you handle your coverage of games you get? Will you only be playing them on the new hardware and disclose as such, or will you try both to see how your experience differs? Do embargoes speci specify what consoles you need to play on? Y'all have done really well in the past talking about what box you play on, but now, with such disparity between hardware and power, it'd be good to know your guys' approach to continue providing cover. Yeah, your approach to continue providing coverage to new games while the line between brand new next gen games and cross gen stays blurry. Great question, Nano. Um, for us in particular, at kind of funny, my knee jerk reaction, and I think what you'd expect from us is that we'll just keep disclosing what we're playing on. I think, you know, even right now, like, you know, I don't mind coming out of the gate and telling you that Blessing and I are the only ones getting PlayStation 5s for this pre-launch window content. Bo, As of now. Bo, 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 we Kevin, hate you. I really, Bo, I really Bo. offered, I tried. I hit him up and I was like, we'd love to get Kevin's opinions on these video games. And they're like, the guy who shows Buffalo Blasts all the time? And I was like, yes. And they were like, I mean, we're going to pass. a technical difficulty that like, I'm really hurt that you're bringing up right now. Just, really, I think it's your, fu your funniest bit, really so I don't think you should call it 10 right now. Okay. Yeah, you're Golden Star. Frank, just lick the box. Just lick it. Just lick the box, man. Why do you want me to lick the box yeah. so bad? <laughs> Golden Star. I want to see it. Yeah. I can't trust Blessing anymore. He's not a friend. I know he's not it's a like friend. You know what I mean? Like, Golden Star, Star, Star funny. Oh, Jeffy Grub Grub is in the chat, and he is still angry about 8K. From what I understand, he he doesn't believe in 8K. Um, so I think for us, it'll be uh, we're not Digital Foundry. We're not your IGNs where they do like or the great breakout box, right? Of like where they talk about differences. I would think, and this will be obviously case by case. We we'll have to feel it all out. But like as we get going and seeing what we get and when we get it and how we get it, like I I would imagine it would be as simple as oh, I played it on PlayStation Five or I played it on Xbox Series X or we played it on PlayStation Four if that's what it is or you know Xbox uh, One X. I think it'll be a disclosure thing rather than, and then for me personally, I wouldn't find the value in necessarily, I shouldn't paint with such a broad brush, but like, let's take Miles, for example. Like for me reviewing Miles, I wouldn't think, all right, cool. I played on PlayStation 5. Now I should really go kick the tires on PlayStation 4. I would just talk about PlayStation 5 and leave that to the people who are doing more comprehensive reviews in that way, right? Because especially for me where, I, I've learned a long time ago. I was funny, uh, you know, with the Xbox Series X, uh, getting into the Xbox ecosystem, doing a bunch of stuff on that, and dialing into my Xbox achievements for the first time in forever, and going all, I went all the way back to when I first started uh, getting Xbox achievements and finding stuff in there. I'm like, why do I have like, th oh, right. I was, I reviewed this on PS3 and then popped in the 360 version of it and played for all of an hour. So I could copy over my review and put in little things you could do because that's all we ever did with it. Like, which was a terrible way to do it because it, it, you know, it wasn't me that reviewed it. But later on, you it would lead you to something like Skyrim, where I think uh, IGN reviewed it on PC and then played, you know, two seconds on Xbox, two seconds on PlayStation, and copied the review over. And then guess what? It turns out, fifteen hours into PS3 Skyrim, there's a huge fucking problem. But you don't dedicate time like that to review stuff. And I think you see it now with the sites where they just say. This is what we played it on. This is what our experiences is, and they copy it over. I think we'll continue to do that and lead the real. Here's what it. Here's where it differs platform to platform to the other outlets that are better at doing that than we are. Am I wrong, Buster? Did you have a whole thing in your head where you were going to try everything on everything? Oh yeah, no, I'm playing every game on PS4 and on the PS5 just so I can compare and contrast. No, I probably sure. won't do that just because I don't have <laughs> the time, and I don't think that's why people like listen to us, right? Like I don't think people are sure. looking for that kind of content specifically from us, right? Like the things, the thing that people come to us for is to hear our own impressions, our own experiences uh, with how we're playing our games. And for me, I know, I know, I look forward to playing, like shifting uh fully toward PS5 when it comes to how I play games in general yeah. moving forward, and that might. Uh, differ depending on like right now i have my ps4 set up like right in front of me so i can play it on my second monitor like in front of my uh on my desk 
Whereas I have a PS4 Pro in the living room uh, c- connected to my 4K TV. Or not my 4K TV, but the 4K TV that I stole from the office uh, that's out there. Right. I'm going to have, and that once I get to the, the, which I got that we stole, zero gold Kevin. stars for, not a big deal. Oh, but that was before we did the gold stars, right? I know it's offensive. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know. I know what you mean. Right. And when I get, when I get the PS5, right, I'm either going to connect it to this TV back here, maybe the 4K TV out there, or the monitor I have in my desk, depending on what the usage is. Uh, if I want to hide something from Michael, I'll just play it on the TV back here, right? <laughs> Whereas if I want to capture something, I'll play it on my monitor. Whereas if I, w- if I want to get the full 4K experience, you know, play it out there. And so uh, once again, when we're talking about this stuff on shows, I'm always going to be like, uh, it's going to be what, I, what I've done before, where usually I, I disclose I'm playing something on, on PlayStation, I want to say. Um, and even like if, especially if technical issues come into play, I'll, I'll then say, hey, I'm playing on a base PS4 because usually I'm playing on a base PS4. Um, that'll just translate to how I play with the PS5 now. Fair. Uh, I want to double back to something in Nana's question. Do embargoes specify what consoles you need to play on? This is a hard one because we're just starting to cross over. Obviously, we've had the Series X for a while. Uh, now we just got PlayStation 5. I wouldn't say the embargo specify like, hey, you need to do this. Right now, it's more of a technical thing of which version of the game is available, which version of the game is ready to go. That's what I've seen uh, with the few and far between games that have popped around where it's not so much like, hey, we're only giving out codes because, hey, on we're only giving out codes on Xbox. We're only giving out codes on Xbox Series X or whatever because... Uh, we don't want you playing other thing. It's more like, hey, that's still coming in late, or there's a big, you know, uh, something we live with every day uh, in our reviews and our work is day one patches, right? And so, I think the next gen day one patches, since they have a bit more time for certain games, obviously a lot of them are launch games and stuff like that. It's different case to case, game to game, and so that's something we're still discovering and uh, riding out as we all go together. And the final question about this very inside baseball day of everybody getting PlayStation 5s comes from Adam F. Uh, he wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can. It says, happy Friday, KFGD crew. So PS5s have made their way into the various media outlets hands today. And it got me thinking, firstly, about how gosh dang excited I am about next gen consoles. But secondly, do these consoles arrive at random to these outlets? Do they have to apply for one? Then this is a question before we announce ours. What well, kind of funny be getting one, or will you not get one until day one? Just interested to know the process. Keep fucking that chicken. I feel like no one has said that in a while. <laughs> Adam F, you're <laughs> right, Adam F. No one has said that in quite some time. Um, so yeah, obviously we ended up getting one. Uh, none of this is random at all. Uh, the way it happens is that PlayStation, uh, for this very specific thing, and for Xbox, I guess, too, uh, hit me up and was like, hey, you know, we're going to be giving you X amount of consoles. Who should they go to? Whoever it is, we have to have this thing filled out. Let's go that w- Let's get all these processes going. Uh, Blessing and I did that. We'll talk about PlayStation 5. Blessing and I did that. And then, of course, we're sent back a giant NDA to sign that's listing off like, hey, here are the rules about you getting this. This is, I saw some people on our Reddit debating. It's not a preview. These are retail versions of the PlayStation 5, some of the first in the world to go out, right? So you're getting this in, uh, uh, you're getting it ahead of everyone else, right? Which comes with all manner of restrictions, rightfully so and understandably so, right? And that is, of course, down to how we, what you should be doing it, when it can go, the embargoes you'd know and expect, right? But then the also stuff of, hey, you know, you cannot, on their various embargoes like don't show this don't show that don't use this program because that stuff's still being worked on we're giving it to you almost what you know almost a month in advance a little bit less but we're giving it to you three weeks early so like the things are we're still landing the plane out there so there's very specific rules and uh, things you have to apply to which makes sense and of course you know i obviously console provided by playstation take what i say with a grain of salt I think it goes in the same way we gave Microsoft so much credit. Thank you, PlayStation, for doing this. Because, again, they could have not done this. They could have waited in on November 11th, giving us a 24-hour head start with these systems that have something to say about them, which would have been definitely, I've talked about in the shows before, right? Would have been a fucking hype 24 hours into the 48 hours weekend for them of everyone doing it, but would have been for people who want to give you reviews and impressions and let's plays and podcasts, a nightmare of everyone trying to get the content out they need to. This is a better way to do it, but to your question of does it happen at random with these outlets like no right like it's a coordinated thing to trusted media partners who they've worked with for years and understand that you know it's very clear obviously like i've said right we're not unboxing it today and they need to understand that when they send it out like i get that or whoever they send it to gets that so it's not like all of a sudden i'm like let's open it up and like let's show you this thing and do that like 
that's how it works. And so, yeah, none of this is ever random. All of this is very coordinated. Uh, I think it's honestly probably the most adult part of the job where it is the thing of here's your NDA. Here's where we're going to do it. We're going to walk you through this and talk to you about what's going on and what you can and can't do. And then I think it's up to us, you know, to ask the right questions to make sure we're not doing something with the system that we thought we were able to do that then violates and stuff. It's, it's a, it's a hard thing to do uh, to coordinate a worldwide launch, let alone a worldwide PR beat and let alone trust other people. And I dialed that back to when we did the game showcase where I, after you know 13 years of doing all of this was so hesitant to give anyone details or press releases ahead of time or let games talk early because it was that fear of it's not that i don't trust other people i just know that mistakes happen and i'm worried about somebody announcing what that like uh skybound was bringing back the walking dead from the first showcase Mm -hmm. not like what playstation's worried about of somebody's like hey our brand new system that we're yeah. worried about you spoiling the end of miles morales or yeah something here's the like entire that. playthrough of x game right and the same year yeah. that we got last of this part two leaked <laughs> right exactly yeah so yeah uh that i think wraps it up pretty much for what we're able to do and talk about but like i said yeah tons more playstation 5 coverage coming here on youtube.com slash kind of funny games please follow that first impressions feed games cast and ps i love you xoxo i have a feeling uh next tuesday's episode is going to be a humdinger now can we can we get you to at least like lick the controller whenever you get the chance to why are you so obsessed with me licking things blessing because that's what the audience wants i'm looking at chat right now and they don't like they don't stop asking for the licking and i agree honestly like i really want to see greg miller's tongue on that box on that ps5 box greg miller is a trap i feel like this is a trap you know what i mean What's Remember the worst Justin I can have? McElroy Bless, spun that around sounded that's really, really nasty. Just so you know, I know it. In the I just UK, don't know if you understand. Those perverts are getting all worked up. I don't know if you understand. Blessing, all right. Like aside from the whole, I take my shirt off. Aside from yeah, me you do take it time, off. Woo! Aside from me being a Sony pony. Aside from me being in the tank for Uncharted and Naughty Dog, I have a reputation in this industry as a serious journalist. Mm. And I just don't know. I'll put a poll up on Twitter. That can decide, right? Nanobiologist has already said he'll gift 10 subs if I uh, if I do it. Hold on. If you lick Should it, I'll lick it. You don't have one. I'll lick, I'll lick it when I get it. What are you typing out right now? What are you, what are you letting Shh. them know? Sh- uh, hold on. The, the chat thinks I should... Hold on. The chat... The chat thinks... Chat oh, is very sure. active right now. Like chat really wants you to look at this thing. And I agree. Oh. It's also Kevin, in do like you agree? slow mode. Which is crazy yeah. how fast it's going. You know? Hold on. Yeah, no, like chat is is <laughs> chat yeah. is acting up right now, you know, yep. dare I say it. All right, I'm telling on. you, all those now, again, this are getting is, all worked know. up. They're getting very worked up. They really want you to lick the box. Wait, I'm going to set the thing for 20 minutes, all right? That's how we'll do it because it's Great. we got 20 minutes until you the end of the show. It's silly to be like, hey, I'm going to set it up. They're going to say yes. The Throw chat think, well, The chat wants me to do it because these perverts over here are just, they're, they're sickos, all right? They're not right in the head. But if Twitter says it, then I trust it. You know what I mean? The chat thinks I should, but I'm not sure. Uh, should I lick the PS5 on, on, on Kind of Funny Game? Can you tweet okay, it out so we can all go and yes. vote, please? Oh, really so excited. Cool. I really want to see him lick this box. Bless you. And like, I want me out, honestly. You make me very. I want full tongue too. Like, I don't want like the tip of the tongue touching <laughs> the box. I want like. <laughs> I you want, want back, like, of, the back tongue of the tongue thrusting back... against the, the corner. You know what I mean? Whoa, you want him to didn't... gag a little <laughs> you bit. You said thrust. Yeah, I did. I was just thinking like a pass. <laughs> I also said gag. <laughs> oh. Shout out yes. to snake or it was his thing his handle is snake and to do but his name is jake on twitter who already beat me and says twitter wants you to lick the box too <laughs> greg i mean it's pretty clear make sure you wipe it down though with something yeah. sanitary number two really? the virus number two really Xbox Xbox is getting (laughs) getting his streaming stick too, maybe? This is Tom Warren at The Verge. Microsoft's head of gaming and Xbox, Phil Spencer, has hinted that the company is planning TV streaming sticks for its xCloud gaming service. In an interview with Straight Cherry, uh, Spencer discusses the potential for additional tiers of Xbox Game Pass, which could include a free bundled TV stick to play xCloud games. Quote, I think you're going to see lower priced hardware as part of our ecosystem when you think about streaming sticks and other things that somebody might want 
to just plug into their TV and go play via xCloud. Uh, no, yeah, no, that's right. Uh, says Spencer, you could you could imagine us even having something that we just included in the games pass or Game Pass subscription uh, that gave you the ability to stream xCloud games to your te- television and buying the controller. Spencer also teases the potential for an Xbox Game Pass Platinum with guaranteed access to new Xbox hardware. Microsoft has been building Xbox subscriptions and hardware bundling Xbox subscriptions and hardware together in something called Xbox All Access, which includes access to Xbox Game Pass and the latest Xbox Series X and Series X consoles. Uh, It's a bundle that Spencer is obviously keen to experiment with in the future. The idea of an Xbox game streaming TV stick isn't a new one for Microsoft. The software giant was preparing lightweight Xbox streaming devices back in 2016, but it canceled the hardware. Microsoft has been investigating streaming sticks and hardware ever since the company originally demonstrated Halo 4 streaming from the cloud to Windows and Windows phones all the way back in 2013. Blessing, are you shocked? No, not at all. I am actually like the least shocked. Uh, this is th- this feels like the natural progression of where things have been going for Xbox, and I think this is really exciting. Like I, I, I know we had the theories about what the Series S was before they actually announced it as the the discless version of the Xbox Series X, D- discless and less powerful. Yeah. Um, this I feel like fits in line with what their strategy is as a company in terms of, Hey, let's just find any way possible to get people into our ecosystem and a streaming stick stick just makes the most sense in terms of what, uh, game streaming on xCloud is and, and, and what that can be, what, what it already is with game pass, uh, and what they can, what they can promote it to be with a streaming stick and with the availability of, Hey, you know, just play anywhere, play however you want. Um, you know, I think fo- a, a lot of folks who may not want to play on their phone because it might not feel the best or may not want to play on their PC because they don't they don't see that as accessible as playing on their TV. Uh, I think this is going to allow for a big old crowd of folks to be like, all right, cool. Yeah, this is a way that I can play on my TV by spending the least amount of money. And I'm going to be comfortable with this because this seems accessible. Uh, it feels like almost like the console, the console gamers version of, you know, being able to get into X Cloud in the easiest way possible. Yeah, Uh, you know, it's not shocking. It's cool to see Phil mention it and talk about it. Obviously, as I mean, the report from The Verge calls out, this has been rumored before and talked about in vagaries. I know, obviously, uh, you know, a nanobiologist wrote in today. His question didn't make it, but he was like, I called it. I'm like, yes, great. And I know Tim called it earlier on another show, too. Like, people have talked about this, and it does make sense, right? This has been the question i guess obviously microsoft is our and xbox have already partnered up with samsung and that's been the big talk of the town of like well clearly then you're going to get an xbox uh game pass ultimate x cloud uh app eventually on these tvs i think that is the future but obviously there are so many tvs out there that aren't going to be compatible with that it makes more sense to also put out a 99 50 streaming stick whatever you know make it work on chromecast and all the other jazz and have it ready to go but yeah, yeah and, I, and I guess you could kind of already. But you know what I mean? In terms of like, here it is. We're ready to go. This is branded. Yeah. Xbox. This is what you're buying it for. Exactly. Like, let's let's take ownership of this in, in, in some way and really push for people to actually buy a Microsoft streaming stick to play games. Uh, Bilbo Baggins as writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, I really don't want to be a negative Nelly, but I just read Phil Spencer's interview about tiered Game Pass subscriptions. Game Pass is truly the best value in gaming, but... As Microsoft manages its first-party developers, I started asking myself how they will be able to sustain and support so many internal developers and keep this profitable. Scooping up subscribers is great, but what happens when that subscriber growth slows down or stops entirely? My only answer is to create... My only answer uh, was to create tiered systems, which I'm guessing could now lock players out of benefits, or they would (gasps) add ads. Now, with Spencer teasing the idea of uh, a platinum level for Game Pass, what are your thoughts? Is this a potential pitfall in the concept of the service-based platforms and making gaming accessible for everyone everywhere? What are your thoughts on what this could do for gaming as a whole? Blessing, do you worry about a platinum Xbox Game Pass, a bronze Xbox Game Pass? Not really. Uh, And I think that's mainly because for what Xbox Game Pass is right now, it is a magnificent deal like the fact that you can you can pay $15 a month for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and get access to not only online not only uh Game Pass on console but also Game Pass on PC and also xCloud streaming like there's so much uh included in that that I can I can see why you would want to uh 
uh, tier it up and make it more profitable because I think that's kind of been where this road is. That's where this road is headed anyway. Like at a certain point, I think either the price just goes up on Game Pass or yeah, they tear it up in this way so that they're able to make more money off of it. Right now, X, X, uh, Game Pass is in, a, in the phase of, hey, let's get, get people in. Let's sell people on it. Let's get as big of an audience as possible and and get as many people involved in the ecosystem as possible. And then years down the line, I feel like this is how every subscription service works, or at least like the major subscription services that we think of have worked, right? Between Netflix and Hulu, right? Get people sure. in, make it ubiquitous, make people live and die by it and then yeah let's raise the price because now we got to make actually make money off of this thing and now that people rely on it now we can actually do it and make it work in that way my thing about it bilbo is i understand you're concerned about it i would hazard the guess that yes as blessings talking about maybe price increment uh, incremental price increases these little different things that'll happen uh i would venture to guess that the basic whatever entry level tier of game pass it would be what you have now i would see it be that if they're going to add tiers it's more about adding more benefits rather than walling off what you already have you know there's a very smart man who doesn't get enough credit i feel and his name is timothy gettys when we started kind of funny there was this idea of all right cool like we should We'll start making we should we should look into uh, uh doing a paywall for the content and I was in the early days of like, well, I don't agree necessarily. Uh, you know, but the Game Over Greggy show going to Bandcamp. That's how you used to get our podcast early. We could go to Bandcamp and pay for it there. Uh, and then eventually it would be free. And I was like, listen, I get it. But like, we're so small and this is a brand new thing we're starting. Let's not do that until we're bigger. And Tim, wise beyond his years, was like, no, dude, that'll be a huge problem. You can't take things away from people. If we come out and show this is what the business is, this is how we're running it, this is how we see our um, marketplace working, people will understand that and they'll be fine with it. And again, later on, we can add benefits, we can do things, move it around that way. But if you ever give somebody something and then change it uh, drastically, there's going to be issues, right? And he was super on point about that where I think right now people understand what Game Pass is. Right now, people have been using Game Pass for years. Right now, what Game Pass is, I see sticking around. You even see it already where there already is kind of a tier, right? Where Game Pass Ultimate is the one that gives you PC, streaming, Xbox, all in one. Whereas you can get, you can, right, still get regular Game Pass that is just streaming or just a, a Game Pass on uh, Xbox, just the games library. I don't think you'd have to worry about things getting taken away, ads being added in. I think that would be something you'd see benefits you're not getting that they continue to add. And at that point, I don't know if you can be super angry about it because you're not promised those additional benefits. You've been paying and subscribing to one thing. What does that look like going forward? What do you think an Xbox Game Pass Platinum looks like? Or like what kind of added benefits do they actually give you? Because at this point, I'm kind of running out of ideas for... <laughs> I am out you, of ideas. You, yeah, like how do you build upon this thing that already is so much of a deal for consumers? It's a great question. Uh, it's a number of different ways. Like, I think a lot of it, this is where you could really use a snow bike mic to enter the picture and talk a little bit mm -hmm. about what is going on on the Xbox ecosystem side. Like somebody who's in it the way I'm in it with PlayStation to know the pain points and follies in here and there. I think from an outsider's perspective talking about it, I would think you could see there's not ever going to be every game's day and date on there, right? But as you look at Amazon Luna, right? And you see this Ubisoft channel that is, hey, Ubisoft stuff's day and date. That could be a future. It, it, maybe they wait for Luna to go away. Maybe they just compete with them head on. That could be a future for Game Pass where, hey, you know, Game Pass is all of the Xbox studios and a whole bunch of stuff we're tossing in there. Game Pass Ultimate is all of that on PC, Xbox, and streaming. Game Pass Diamond Sapphire Ru Ruby. Damn, Sapphire? Sapphire Ruby. <laughs> is... All the things we just talked about and every Ubisoft game, right? And in the, Or maybe you just put add-ons in there where it is you're getting those channels and adding that kind of thing in there. I don't know from a systems level what Xbox thing you'd be adding in terms... Like, again, I don't think you can be like, well, now parties are behind the paywall. No fucking way, right? Everybody would lose mm -hmm. their mind. But maybe bells and whistles, maybe exclusive vanity things, maybe stuff like that, right? I think that's how you start enticing and making these packages into something. Yeah. exclusive you know in a similar way to what ubisoft does with their you know whatever crazy gold editions where you're playing three days early do that with xbox right that that is the agreement of like listen 
you pay your 10 bucks, 14 bucks for Xbox Game Passes, you know it right now. Awesome. You get everything day and day. But you go up to 20 bucks, you can play those games three days early and you can get in and have that maybe. Maybe there's, you know, exclusive game nights and stuff and celebrities mm-hmm. or whatever and stuff like that you start jumping into. Yeah. Put DLC in there for Platinum because that's yeah. not available right now for Ultimate. Yeah, exactly. There's a bunch of different ways you can start adding benefits. But I think you, I'm, and again, I'm probably being Greg and naive and, and, and too nice about everything. I do think that you can add benefits without taking them away from current subscribers. But we'll see. But again, too, that like yeah, that's a perfect world that I'll, I that I would love to be the case. Sure. And like, but I mean, again, you know, like you look at it, right? Then you talk about like what Xbox has done and like what Phil and that team has created over there and built like, yeah, a lot of times they're making the perfect world decision. They're doing they, amazing things that you don't expect them to do. They, ha- they have a great track record, which is also kind of the thing that has me like, OK, let's let's see how long this can last, because now, yeah, we're talking about Xbox Game Pass having in. Even you add in Bethesda titles now, and it's like, wow, what a great deal that is! In a few, in a few years, I feel like that has to topple somewhere. Or we they have to like cut somewhere, and maybe that's maybe that is me being like too uh, anxious or too too uh, on the the uh, glass half empty kind of side of things. But we'll we'll see. I'm really I'm really curious to see how it plays out. Number three on the Roper Report while we're talking three? about x cloud yeah yeah you're having fun aren't you it's a good show it's a long show i'm ex- i mean i'm having, the, I'm last, having a great we can, time. the last two are like you know just padding and they're gonna have to get to them. yeah uh number three while we're tackling x cloud let's go to eddie over at GameSpot. uh mike this is something we talked about really quickly at the end of yesterday's show is breaking news i think i got into you're wrong but i didn't get a full rundown uh microsoft's x cloud game streaming service allows users to play titles with either a wireless controller or through touch controls. However, the platform launched with touch controls only available for Minecraft Dungeons. But now, a handful more titles are supported. Microsoft has now confirmed 10 more titles available on the service that now support touch controls, including number one, Dead Cells, well, I don't have to number them, Dead Cells, Guacamelee 2, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Hot Shot Racing, uh, Killer Instinct, Instinct, new super lucky's tale slay the spire streets of rage 4 tell me why and undermine touch controls are integrated differently depending on the game for example hellblade displays different controls for when you're walking around the world and when you're in combat in hot shot racing meanwhile uh, there is a touch controlled throttle that aims to replicate the feeling of analog triggers on a controller Uh, the guiding principle for all the touch controls is to allow you to do everything with just two digits uh and for those looking to customize the experience the on-screen controls can be moved around to your liking finally microsoft created new icons to help people quickly understand what they're doing uh these are the jump and dodge icons as well as something involving a lightning bolt cool that's really awesome like I, one whole- that's that's great for accessibility but then also like it's just great it's just a great period the idea that you can customize the the touch controls and then also touch controls change based on the game that's a level of depth that i wouldn't have expected like i would have just expected it to be an an xbox controller replica displayed on screen that you're controlling the fact that yeah from game to game like the hellblade is going to control differently than hot shots because those two games probably deserve different treatments as far as how you're going to control uh or as, as far as how the touch controls are displayed that's pretty cool yeah agreed I think, you know, for me, the big, the coolest thing about xCloud is being able to pair a controller with your phone or whatever. But I'm glad this is here if that's what people are looking for and they want a quick one. Speaking of quick ones, Greg, why? Uh, number four, Ghost of Tsushima Legends raid and weekly details have been revealed. Again, something we tacked on yesterday, but I want to give the full time to. Uh, this is from the Sucker Punch blog. Get raid ready. We're excited to confirm that you'll be able to play the tale of EO uh, beginning Friday, October 30th. This is the culmination of the story in Ghost of Tsushima Legends, uh, bringing the fight directly to EO's realm. This raid is divided into three chapters and requires a full team of four ghosts, as well as excellent coordination and communication. The tale of EO will not support matchmaking, so you'll need to arrange your team ahead of time to be ready to jump in together. You'll want to have your key level at 100 uh, as an absolute minimum before you attempt to take on this challenge. To get raid ready, we recommend finishing all the story missions and replaying story and survival on higher difficulties to get higher level gear. Blessing at Yoye Junior. You have been straight up obsessed yes. with Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Are you now at key level 100? Are you ready for the raid? I am past level 100. In fact, I'm trying to get up to level 
uh, 110. So the way it works, right, Greg, there are multiple tiers to the missions. You have bronze, you have silver, you have gold. You you work your way up as you're leveling up in key. And so now I've been doing the gold missions, and I've been rocking those gold missions. And they're awesome, Woo. by the way. Like, you know how we 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 did the Let's Play of Ghost, Ghost of Shima, which is available on YouTube.com, so it's kind of funny games for people who want to go and watch that. Uh, and we were doing the bronze story missions. Yeah. When, we, when you switch up to silver and then up to gold, not only does the difficulty increase, but things change about the missions that, like, make them more involved and more interesting. And so, like, you know, in our first mission, they're, like, tethered folks, and that was, that was about it. Uh, and then, like, as we went through the story, it started introducing, like, attunements and different mechanics in terms of how to work together and all that stuff. Once you get up to gold, they start putting in attunements and different things into the first story mission and change things up in ways that I think are really great to keep things fresh and to keep things uh, interesting. The the build from bronze to gold has me very excited for what the raid is going to be in Ghost of Tsushima Legends because it, I expect it to be a culmination of all the different mechanics. Like get in like the attunements, the tethering, the uh, Oni demons, the um, the uh, I forget what they're called, but the demons that you have to kill because they're the ones that are keeping all the other demons alive. I assume all that is going to be smashed together in a really yeah. in a really great way, and I'm very excited about it. I'm ready for it. Uh, I'm trying to gather a team of, uh, of four. I think right now I might have Andrew Goldfarb on my on my Ooh. squad, and I might also have um um uh, uh Cardi from IGN. Um, I just have to I have to hit him up to make sure he's down with it. But we might have a squad, and I'm very excited about it. You should stream it if you do it. Ooh, that'd be a good idea. I might do that. Do Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Or I can just do it on my own Twitch channel. Nah, no, but you do it on ours. Do it on us and then just take a morning off. You know what I mean? Like just come on. Think think yeah, think mean, smarter, all right? If you call me the king of Halloween, I'll do it. No. No. You don't even have a PlayStation 5. You know what I mean? You know come what I mean? Yes, 5 is not connected to Halloween in any right, sort of you keep saying uh, that Weekly you challenges are also happening. Like at, a Halloween a start, game coming out. Starting at 8 a.m., but you could play Medieval if you were get a Platinum if you were a true fan with that backwards compatibility. There you go. Starting at 8 a.m. Pacific time every Friday, they're going to feature a new two-player story mission and four-player survival mission with specific weekly modifiers. Uh, the teams with the highest scores will be featured on weekly leaderboards, one for the story mission and one for the survival mission. These missions are nightmare difficulty and are intended to put you and your team to the test. They'll be very difficult, but if you and your fellow ghosts are able to complete them, along with all the bonus objectives, you'll get max level gear that will help you become raid ready. Now, blessing. Speaking of becoming raid ready, I am always ready for anything because I use Old Spice deodorant. And let yeah, me you tell are. you, there are sponsors for Kind of Funny Games Daily today. Uh, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is sponsored by Old Spice Below Deck. Just because everyone gets a sweaty crotch or inner thigh chafing doesn't mean you have to go through life with a sweaty crotch or inner thigh chafing. This is like gymnastics for my tongue as I try to say all this. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Kind of Funny loves Old Spice. Of course, I use their deodorant and their pomade. Uh, Tim does the exact same thing, and we're both excited to start using Old Spice Below Deck on our nether regions. <laughs> Old Spice has a new Below Deck powder spray to help you feel drier and cleaner down below, and new Below Deck anti-chafe stick to help prevent inner thigh chafing. That has happened to me before, and it sucks. Uh, all of this is available in the family planning aisle at Walmart or online at walmart.com slash Old Spice Below Deck. Thank you, Old Spice. Do -do 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 -do. They don't ask me to do the jingle, but I will gladly do the jingle. Uh, let me get you two fast ones before I get you out of here. Uh, number five, Nintendo is selling single blue slash red Joy-Cons in November at a discount. This is ONS good at Polygon. The standard price of a solo Nintendo Switch Joy-Con controller is going down by $10 to $39.99 beginning November 9th. It's been $49.99 since the console launched more than three years ago. Nintendo announced the price drop Friday morning. A pair of Joy-Cons is still $79.99. Uh, so while this probably reflects more of their individual costs, uh, you still save nothing if you buy a full set rather than two individually. You can have any color you want as long as it's blue for the left controller or red for the right controller. <laughs> Though the permanent uh, uh, MSRP on a pair of Joy-Cons is still the same, right now Amazon has a pair on sale for $69.00. Nice. In four color schemes, classic red and blue, not among them, though. Uh, if It's not a spectacular price drop, but if one of yours has had an issue, parentheses like cough, cough, drift, or something, it's still cheaper than getting a pair. And a Nintendo Switch Pro controller is still $69.99 for those wondering. So there you go. 10 bucks off. Cool. One. I need, I want to get, I, I want, 
new colors. Jen took my Mario red ones, and I'm not mad about it. They're just gone. And then I had the drift happen to my neon yellow ones. So I'm just using gray ones, and it's boring. But then I just sit there, and I think about the fact of there's going to be a Switch Pro next year, right? Like, is it even worth buying new Joy-Cons? I probably work with this. Well, I guess it'll come with new Joy-Cons, wouldn't it? I yeah, that this, makes sense. Well, just, maybe they won't work. Maybe it'll be a different design. Maybe it'll be bigger could, ones. You think we'll get Joy Con twos? Maybe. Mm. Really maybe cool. they fix the, the drift. You know what I mean? I highly recommend uh, blue, blue and yellow. That's the combination I got recently because I've had the Joy Con drift, and I was I was skeptical when I saw it on Amazon. Yeah. But I was like, I want to be different. I don't want just I don't just want to go for blue and red. And so I got the blue and yellow. And let me tell you, I really like how it looks aesthetically. And let me tell you, it's really turning me on. It's hot. <laughs> I like Final it. story of the day is a simple one. Uh, as you know, Game Informer has a whole bunch of coverage over about uh, the Spider-Man Miles Morales game that's coming out to that PlayStation 5 right there. And it turns out that the Miles Morales actor found out he was getting his own game at the launch party for Spider-Man. Uh, Miles Mor- I'm sorry, this is Jordan Oleman at IGN who pulled the quotes from Game Informer's excellent coverage. Everybody should run over there. Um, Sp- Miles Morales actor. Najee, would you say? Najee? Is that how you would say that, Bless? I am Najee? not looking at the doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Najee. Najee Dieter uh, found out that he was starring in an official Spider-Man spinoff at the launch party for 2018's Marvel Spider-Man. In an interview with Game Informer, the actor talked about bringing Miles Morales to life in the upcoming PS5 game, adding that he first found out he was taking the starring role at the launch party for Insomniac's Spider-Man. Uh, quote, Brian Intahar, friend of the show, uh, who was our creative director for Marvel Spider-Man, took me aside and he was like, hey man, how do you, how do you feel about you know having your own game and making Miles his own thing? Jeter was naturally excited about starring as Morales uh, in an entirely new title. Quote, I was like, I'm ready. But I had to take care of some business stuff on the side. So I told him like, yeah, I'm ready, man. Let's do it. I'm going to let you know when everything is set in stone and ready to go. Uh, Jeter then consulted Spider-Man voice actor Yuri Lowenthal for some pointers about portraying Spider-Man in the game. And about a number of other and about a number of uh, sessions necessary for the role quote yuri had to teach me how to swing in the booth because you know miles wasn't swinging in the first game uh jeter previously portrayed miles morales in the disney xd spider-man tv show as well as marvel ultimate alliance 3 the black order That's no awesome. news there just a cute one to end on i just like yeah. the idea of uh, being uh, like brian pulling him aside at the launch party and telling him I like the idea of Yuri teaching uh, Naji like how to be Spider Man in the booth. That has yeah. like a cool parallel to the actual game that I appreciate. And believe it or not, that's it. Blessing. Greg. I'm sad the news is over and we have to wait till Monday to get more news. I'm sad the Monday's so far away. Yet. Your PS5 is so far away too because you don't know how it to is. get up in the morning. Uh, if I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mom and Grop shops, where would I go? You'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Yeah! Out today! Galicide on Xbox One and Switch. Lord of the Click on Xbox One and Switch. Transformers Battlegrounds, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Pumpkin Jack on the Xbox One, Switch, and PC. BH Trials on Xbox One. Supermarket Shriek on PS4, Switch, and PC. Grood on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Klee on Xbox One. Uh, Kakurasu uh, World on Switch. Truck Mechanic Simulator, Switch. Maze, Switch. Truck Driving Simulator, Switch. I think I just... Oh, there's two different ones. Okay. Uh, Cross <laughs> cross Crush on uh, Switch. Uh, Farm Mechanic Simulator again? That's a different... How no, many mechanic are, simulators are there? All, there's so Truck <laughs> Mechanic Simulator, Truck Driving Simulator, Farm Mechanic Simulator. That's Switch. Great. The Outer Worlds uh, and the Outer Worlds Peril of Gorgon are now available on Steam. Uh, and then Dreadstar launched on Steam today as well. Yeah, you've played uh, the DLC, right? Yeah, Peril of Gorgon World. is really fun. I highly recommend it. And, and Greg, one of the games you, you read uh, early was Lord of the Click, which is coming out for Xbox One and Switch. Uh, Greg, if you lick your PS5, you could become the Lord of the Lick. Have you ever thought about that? See, that's a title I don't want. Like, you're not making it. You're not enticing me at all to do it. It's like all. you can't. You can't be king of Halloween, and so get the next best thing. Be the, I be am the, the Lord, king of Halloween, as decreed by Spirit Halloween. Or you can be, be the, the Lord lick of the Lad. Lick. I don't want to be the Lick Lad either. <laughs> lick Lad sounds like lick the sidekick. Sounds, of the Lord of the yeah. Lick. Yeah, but like, th- there's something wrong happening there. You know what I mean? Sino Alice comes uh, to the App Store and Google Play on October 30th. The Skylia Prophecy, or Skylia Prophecy, comes to Steam October November 20th. And the Case Book of Arnie, Arn, 
uh, is releasing on Steam October 29th. I have a deal of the day for you as well. I'm reading from Twinfinite there. Tom Meyer reports. The Epic Game Store is giving away another two free PC games this week and has kicked off its Halloween sale with discounts of up to 75%. The two free games, as announced last week, are Double Fine's turn-based RPG Costume Quest 2 and first-person psychological horror game Layers of Fear 2. Both have a focus in either the spirit of Halloween or horror in general for the upcoming spooky holiday. The two games are available to claim for free from the Epic Games Store beginning today until Thursday, October 29th. Uh, Epic Games announced the next two free games to be available after will be the first-person horror game Blair Witch and Ghostbusters, the video game remastered, uh, still both keeping with that supernatural spirit of Halloween. That Blessing obviously knows nothing about. It's my favorite holiday. It isn't it's why I'm wearing a Halloween you. suit. It's very colorful. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Very detailed. <laughs> it's time to squat up, ladies and gentlemen. There is a lot of detail in that spirit Halloween suit. There it's is. time to squat up, ladies and gentlemen. This is where one of you goes to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Jackson S. needs help in Pokemon Go, and he writes, well, uh, trainer code is 782 782- one three three one zero five one seven four i started playing pokemon go recently and i am looking for some new friends to send and receive the unnecessary number of gifts that you get in this game i play literally all day pretty much every day and will send as many gifts as i can also thank you to blessing for showing us how the true king of halloween should act greg thanks for running the best gaming podcast and company in the world thank you guys also thanks kevin you're welcome if you Want to play Pokemon Go? Jackson S. Hit him up. Trainer code 7821331054. Hard to believe I read, you know, these ahead of time. I assembled the doc and I still kept it in there making fun of me. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong. Kebabs writes in and says, is the PS5 currently in the box? Because it must be awfully light if it is. Uh, it is still in the box. It's it's hefty. But I'm, yeah, I assume you're so talking strong. about because I held it up here talking for a long so time. Strong. I just got strong arms. All right. Yeah. yeah. Flex, Especially my right arm. My right arm gets a lot of work. Um, nanobiologists. Now we talked about that. Yeah. Redeem. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, no. I don't care about that. Uh, probably gonna be in October. Oh, I didn't say Donktober. Good point. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um that's all we got wrong. I do like this to put a pin in this conversation. Uh redeem Shashank. Right, since I know it's probably a joke, but given millions have died, I've lost relatives as well. I would request you not to take a risk and set a poor example of health in the pandemic and lick the box. I hear you. We, I wasn't going to lick the box, everybody. And I understand that I could disinfect the box, but if I disinfect the box and then there's a photo of me licking the box, guess who's going to put up everything saying Greg the, Miller licked the box without disinfecting the box. The box and then a million people buy the PlayStation 5 on uh, November 12th and then they're licking boxes and then everybody's dead from licking boxes because they licked a box that came from Walmart. And guess what? Some COVID guy in the back of Walmart touched it and yada, yada, yada. So we're not licking the box. Everybody be chill. Well, sadly, it is really, really real, Kevin. <laughs> I wish it wasn't a real and we could lick things at E3 again and not worry no, about dying. I, but I know, I know. I just... Yeah, I don't want Johnny at home to lick the box because Greg Miller licked the box. I don't... Johnny I don't Grand! Home. I saw Greg do it! <laughs> and then he coughs on Grand. Do- Grand goes like, into the iron lung. She dies. I feel like no matter what now, the Pandora's box been open. Now all these kids are going to lick boxes and send you images of it. Well, you know? here's the thing about it was like they were going to do that regardless. I want everyone to know from the ver- from the jump here that out of all the content I thought to do with the box, at no point did I think I was going to be asked to lick it. <laughs> that was not on my... You know what I should do with the PlayStation 5 today? Don't it's worry about it. Don't lick my, your box. Stay healthy, thought. everybody. Uh, this, thought. of course, is the end of this week, meaning that next week you get a brand new plethora of hosts coming through. It looks like this, and this is always subject to change. Monday, Blessing and Imran on Kind of Funny Games Daily. Tuesday, Tim Gettys and from GameSpot.com, Tamor Hussein are going to host the first ever Tim Tam episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. <laughs> Tim Whoa. Tam Wednesday, it's me and Gary. Thursday, it's me and Tim. Friday, it is me and Blessing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kinda Funny Games Daily. Uh, of course, the show isn't over. As much as I want to go tear apart this PlayStation 5 and start making content about it, uh, we have a post show to do on patreon.com slash games. Answer a few more questions before the PlayStation 5 weekend begins for me, and Blessing goes back to refreshing a FedEx page. Remember, if you want to be part of Kinda Funny Games Daily, patreon.com slash games. Uh, you can give us questions, comments, concerns, everything out of the video, video game sun, and of course, uh, you can give us your squad ups, you can do all that jazz. We have a great time. If you don't want to give us any bucks and get the post show we're about to do you can go to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games watch as we record it live uh watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games where again a plethora of playstation podcast coverage is going live please like subscribe share over there uh, of course please uh follow first impressions uh the podcast feeds all the different podcasts will be up there too if you want to listen instead remember uh playstation 5 was provided by playstation remember there's that post show i was talking about and remember that until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you